Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we're going to be talking about W4 games and their W4 console pricing. Now, if you're having a sense of deja vu, I apologize. I actually uploaded this video earlier, but I made a pretty huge error in it. So this is a version 2. If you saw that first one, there's nothing really new being covered here. This one's just error-free. But if you're new to the party, we're talking today about W4 games. Now, W4 games was founded by uh, the lead developer of the Godot Engine Project, the lead community manager, and a couple other people high up in the Godot uh, Foundation. It's basically designed to commercially support uh, development around the ecosystem for Godot. Uh, so that's the entire idea behind W4 Games. They've gotten a lot of funding in the last little while, $23.5 million to be precise, and that's primarily for this product right here. Now, this is W4 consoles. This is a set of middleware that enables you to port your game over to the Nintendo Switch, the Xbox Series X and S, and the PlayStation 5. You will notice a lack of PlayStation 4 and Xbox X. It's kind of, yeah, unfortunate that part. But anyways, we're talking about them today because we just got pricing for this W4 consoles middleware. So if you want to port your Xbox game over to those platforms, this is something you can use. Now, it is closed source. Uh, there is a private repository you get access to, but it is not an open source project. This is separate to uh, the Godot core itself. And today, again, we do have that pricing for it. Now, here's the big error I made before. I did per person. Now, the difference between per person and per team is, well, it can be up to a factor of eight times. So obviously, second take of the video, it took me a little bit of time to get this back out there, but hopefully uh, you guys are corrected on this one. So, uh, and by the way, for future reference, there is no ability anymore to update a YouTube video. It's not a simple process anymore. They've removed annotations. Why? I don't know. Ask Google. It's stupid. But anyways, uh, this is the updated version with the more correct version. And you'll notice here there are three pricing tiers. There's Starter, there's Pro, and there's Enterprise. Now, Enterprise is a custom negotiated license. We're not going to talk about that at all. The only thing you're going to notice about it is it has um, premium support, emergency escalation as an option, and you can actually get an, a success manager, which basically I believe is more or less an employee at W4 Games to work with your project. Uh, but otherwise, what you're looking at here is starter and pro tier. Starter tier is a team of up to eight people. It costs $800 per year per team. By the way, that is unbridled from the number of titles you make. So if you make 900 games, you can um, have them all basically for $800 a year. Now, stop spamming out crap games, people. But yeah, you could do that. Also, if you don't publish any games, it's still potentially going to cost you that $800 a year. By the way, it's going to cost you this in perpetuity. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Obviously, if you are of a certain size, that is, if your team has uh, more than eight but less than 20, then you're jumping up in price by a factor of like five times here. You'll notice here as you add more platforms, uh, it gets a little bit cheaper. Uh, so instead of $1,600, for two, it's 1500 and then the same deal here, 2500 instead of, uh, what would that be, 2400 So uh, you're saving $400 for having all three platforms in there. Another thing you're going to notice, and this one is causing some confusion, is this one, publisher slash porting house allowed. Now, the publisher part is a bit of a catch because you could potentially have a publisher but not have funding, uh, and they said reach out to them if you're in that situation. So if you're a small developer, you have a publisher, but the publisher isn't giving you money for your title, you, you may still be able to fit in the starter tier, but you'll have to reach out to them for that. Uh, the porting house, though, is a little bit interesting. Interesting. There are other companies out there. We're going to get to two of those. Actually, let's do it right now. There's other options out there, such as Pineapple Works and Lone Wolf Technology. These both, the, both these guys, they do uh, porting. Uh, this guy is actually the other founder of the Godot engine. These guys port specifically uh, Godot projects. These guys are more generalist, uh, so they've got Unity, Unreal, and Godot. Basically, I think you hand your game to them, the source code, the assets, etc., and they port it for you. Well, what this is saying is they can't um, be used. So in the starter tier, so if you're a pro or enterprise, you can work with a publisher or a porting house. Starter, you cannot. So this could be a bit of a catch. If you get into a weird catch-22 situation that you don't think is defined there, reach out to them and they might be able to make it work. Another thing to note is this is all in USD. Now, there are a few things to clarify coming down here. Uh, this is entirely... Um, only going to be working with Godot 4.2 and higher. So if you're working on Godot 3.x project or 4 or 4.1, uh, you'll find, yeah, that that's a bit of an issue there. Um, also, you can use C Sharp, at least you will be able to at the time of release. By the way, the release, it's in early access right now or preview right now. It uh, should be generally available in uh, Q1 of 2024, so in a few months from now. It should support all of the features of Godot, although uh, some of them may actually not make it in, such as if... if uh, 
you know, reasonable, technically feasible. So there's certain things that you just probably can't do on the Nintendo Switch, for example. Uh, they may not make it across. They do have support for achievements and cloud saves. Uh, they will do the updates as they come in. Basically, your access to the code is a private repository that they continue to upgrade as time goes on. Uh, they are. This one is interesting, uh, and I would actually, I'd be curious to see if Xbox One and PS4 are currently outselling PS5 and Xbox Series X at this point in time, especially in the world of Xbox, where honestly an Xbox One and Xbox, so especially One Pro and a Series X S are pretty much the same damn thing. So I, I find that unfortunate they're not supporting Xbox One at the very least. PS4, I could understand being more work, uh, but yeah, that's... That's a big flaw, in my humble opinion, because I honestly think that that is a big chunk of the community, at least for the next few years. Um, do you user mind data, telemetry, all that stuff? Right? Not? No. Uh, they might have optional telemetry for benchmarking quality control in the future. Uh, so here is the key thing. If you are a porting house, uh, do I need to pay for a pro license? And in the case of a uh, porting house, like one of those two I just mentioned earlier, it's actually their customer or publisher that would have to do it. That, that way it kind of keeps it from a porting house could get one license and just port everything under that single license. So that's why that exception is there. Um, now, if a porting house was publishing their own game, obviously this would not apply. Um, so you can have as many games as you want under the license. Now, this one is key and people should really, so I'll read the entirety of it. This is important. Uh, so what happens when your subscription ends? Under the starter and pro licenses, when you stop paying, you lose access to the W4 console repositories. You are also not permitted uh, to publish or further update any game that you have published with our ports as long as you're using any part of the W4 code base for that specific platform. If your company desires more permissive terms, always arrange an enterprise license for non-content patches uh, with the exclusive intention of keeping the game compliant with current SDKs. Post-launch, no license is required. So if you're literally just um, you know, keeping it up to date with the newest iOS requirements or Xbox requirements or whatever, you do not need anything. However, uh, you will not have access to the repositories if you do not have an active license. So if you are making any changes or updates to your games in the future, you're going to need a license in perpetuity. If you are making um, specific non-content patches, you should be good to go as long as the code that you currently have access to does the trick for you. Um, and then uh, team, what, what counts as a team in terms of that eight person and 20 person limits? Basically everybody, including company leadership and so on, everybody, uh, including contractors, etc. cetera. Um, so what happens when you exceed the license? You contact them basically and they make the difference between them. Uh, and a little bit more in terms of just straight specific kind of things. You have some interesting uh, shots at other companies here. Do I need a runtime fee or install fee? No, uh, et cetera. And then we got a little bit more about, you know, what the other features are here. Now, the key thing that you're going to notice here is this price, this $800 per team for one platform. I don't think that was uh, picked in a vacuum. It looks a whole lot like this pricing. And this is the enterprise pricing at 919 Canadian, which is called 800 USD, that gives you console exports for Game Maker. So if you are uh, want the tooling to be able to publish to uh, consoles using Game Maker, it's eight hundred dollars a year uh, at the because you need to have the enterprise to publish to consoles. So that is the gotcha there. Uh, so that is where this pricing comes from, one hundred percent. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the summary. Uh, w four consoles, eight hundred dollars per team, up to eight developers, and then it's. Uh, substantially more, four or five times more uh, for up to 20. And then beyond that, it's basically uh, negotiated pricing. So I'm curious, what do you think of this overall pricing? And uh, sorry for the re-upload again per per user versus per team. Uh, I'm tired. I read it wrong. My mistake. So hopefully this video clarifies that. And uh, if you got the notification twice, I apologize to you. But what do you think of this pricing? I will also link to the old video down below. Uh, I'll make it private. But if you want to read the comments for it, uh, they'll be available there. So if your comment disappeared, it didn't. I just made a new video. So check out that link down below. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.